Scoot up here. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Leonard Firestone. I am the council member for District 7, uh, representing this area, of course. And um, I want to thank everyone for being here. We've got a great crowd. And I can tell you that uh, as a committee and as chairman of the committee, we're excited that everybody's here. We're excited to hear from people. Um, I want to remind everyone uh, we do have uh, the opportunity for public comments. Uh, if you would like to make uh, any comments, we are going to limit those comments to about two minutes. Uh, but if you haven't signed up to make your comments, please do that just outside uh, in the front where you walked in uh, so we can have that list and, and be ready to go. Um, but as I said, uh, again, we're excited uh, that you all are here. I'll give you just uh, a quick, you know, maybe overview of what we've been working on the last few months. And, you know, it really started with, um, a, I think, a, an initiative at the city that we identified we have issues to deal with with this building, and that's first and foremost uh, what we're concerned about. And we, we're going to get into that a little bit because it's a marvelous asset of the city located, uh, hi Lily, uh, located of course in the cultural district, which is such a, a phenomenal asset in and of itself for Fort Worth for uh, so many different reasons. Uh, so, you know, that's, uh, of course, what we started to uh, really address was we have to get this building right. Uh, and we really see it as an opportunity to do something special. Because I, I think when we started to consider what to do with the facility, which needs a lot of repair, and you all may have seen that in the news. It's upward of, you know, 27 million roughly. Uh, I, that's the, the number uh, today and probably going up, of course, in today's world. Um, it, it, it is in desperate need of repair. So we wanted to tackle that problem first and foremost and then understand after that, uh, after the realization, I should say, of, you know, what could this be? Let's reimagine what this could be and reimagine who could be here and make this something special. Because at the end of the day, I think the, in the committee's identification of that issue, one, the building, two, the opportunity, uh, we just see that there's great potential here. And again, it's an opportunity. Uh, because as we look ar around us, we can see from, from Dickies to the Kimball to the Carter to, you know, these amazing facilities that we have in the area. Natural science, of course, and the Cowgirl Museum as well. These are world-class assets, and there's no reason this should not be a world-class asset. And so that's kind of what the committee's thinking has really evolved to, is to how to, simply to how it how to make it special, so we can t certainly talk further about that. Uh, we want to do that, but before we do it, uh, you know, you'll see here at the dais. Um, uh, I'm going to give everyone the opportunity to introduce themselves, and you'll quickly, if you don't know them already, quickly realize and hopefully appreciate we have some of the best of the best minds in the city that have worked in all different ways in different capacities to build within the cultural district uh, and certainly uh, throughout the city. So uh, let's, let's get started if we could and um, please uh, introduce yourself. I'm Dawn Taft, I'm an artist, a community volunteer and an art advocate. I'm Ann Zeta and I served on the Fort Worth City Council for seven years representing District 9 and I now work for a nonprofit called Community Design Fort Worth and we educate and advocate around urban planning issues throughout the city of Fort Worth. Good evening, I'm Patrick Newman, President and CEO of the Fort Worth Botanic Garden um, and I am admittedly the least important person in the room. <laughs> Fernando Costa, Assistant City Manager. 
William Giron, Executive Director for Artes de la Rosa. I'm Scott Wilcox. I'm the COO at the Amy Carter Museum and also the Chairman of the Cultural District Alliance. Good evening. I'm Lily Biggins, retired healthcare executive. My last uh, gig was down at Harris Methodist Fort Worth. <clears throat> I'm Matt Carter, and I would like to uh, rival Andrew for the least important person in the room. <laughs> I'm, I'm with the Fort Worth Stock Show, by the way. I'm Mike Hyatt. I'm treasurer of the Fort Worth Zoo Association and uh, have been on that board for a long time. Okay, thank you. Um, so now I'd like to reintroduce Fernando. Uh, Fernando, of course, is with the city, and um, he's going to explain, I think, uh, in some detail, really the purpose of our task force, just to task force to further illuminate uh, my comments and uh, specifically get into um, uh, a review of the online comments that we have solicited the last couple of weeks. Fernando? Thank you, for some Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to direct your attention to the screen and we'd like to set the stage for public comments by sharing information with you about the work that the 1300 Gendi Task Force has performed uh, during the past several weeks. We'd like to thank each of the task force members for the time and effort that they've devoted uh, to this assignment. And I think uh, we should also thank uh, the staff of Arts Fort Worth uh, for the splendid way in which they've hosted uh, all of the task force meetings, including tonight's event. Uh, thank you all for, for being here tonight. Uh, we have a full house here in the Sanders Theater, and I think we're filling up the overflow room uh, next door. So we're very happy that, that you're here. I'd like to cover four topics with you in, in, in short order. Uh, first, some background information about the task force itself. Uh, then some of the preliminary findings that the task force has made based upon a uh, review of factual data. We'd like to share with you uh, the results to date, they're not final, but the results to date of an opinion survey that uh, we'd like for any interested Fort Worth resident to complete. In fact, if you haven't done so already, we would encourage you to visit the city's website and you can find uh, the, the survey uh, uh, on the website. It'll only take uh, a few minutes to complete, but the, the information from that survey uh, we find to be uh, exceedingly valuable in gaining uh, a greater understanding about uh, how uh, Fort Worth residents feel about uh, the Community Arts Center uh, and uh, its, uh, its future. Finally, we'd like to uh, uh, describe the issues that uh, remain to be resolved upon which we'd like to receive comments uh, from the public tonight. And so some, some background information. The task force was created by the Fort Worth City Council by means of a resolution that they adopted at their regular meeting on February 14th. And the council gave the task force uh, certain specific responsibilities, including uh, a review of the building condition assessment that was conducted last summer uh, by the firm of uh, Bennett Partners, Michael Bennett, a, a prominent local architect, uh, to assess existing potential uses of this building and to assess potential funding sources for necessary repairs, any future renovations, and ongoing maintenance. Uh, to conduct one or more public hearings, which we're doing tonight, to recommend future uses of the building, recommend funding sources, uh, for the necessary repairs, renovations, and maintenance. And finally, to present a report to the City Council no later than the first Tuesday in May, uh, which of course precedes the City Council election uh, so that the current Council may be able to uh, act upon uh, recommendations from the task force if they wish to do so. The task force is comprised of 16 members, and you can see the, the, the names uh, uh, on the screen. 
Uh, all of them have been uh, participating. Uh, not all of them are here yet tonight, but they've all been involved uh, in the process, and they represent uh, a distinguished uh, uh, cross-section of Fort Worth leadership. We've also involved uh, a total of eight different uh, city departments, uh, which are represented here tonight, uh, providing support uh, to the task force uh, from the city manager's office, uh, communications, development services, and historic preservation, economic development, the law department, uh, planning and data analytics, which uh, oversees our budget, uh, property management, uh, and public events, which manages uh, the Will Rogers Memorial Center. The task force so far has held a total of three meetings, uh, uh, three consecutive Thursdays. Uh, we're having the public meeting tonight, and they have scheduled two more meetings on April 13th and 27th before they deliver their report to the council in May. And so some of the preliminary findings that the task force has made, this building uh, goes back to 1954, and it was designed and constructed in three separate phases, uh, which gives this building its, uh, its own uh, eclectic flavor. Uh, uh, 1954, the, the main art gallery, uh, designed by uh, Herbert Baer. 1966, the, the Scott Theater and Solarium uh, by Joseph Pellick. In 1976, the Art Museum uh, in Port Cochere addition by O'Neill Ford Associates. Uh, so the, the building, by, by every assessment, uh, is historically and architecturally significant uh, and uh, a valued uh, asset uh, for the city of Fort Worth. Uh, the, uh, the building uh, encompasses some 96,000 square feet uh, of space, uh, 77,000 square feet of which is classified as usable uh, floor space. Uh, the city has uh, leased this building to Arts Fort Worth, uh, uh, otherwise known as the, the Arts Council of Fort Worth, uh, in five-year lease agreements uh, going back to 2005, uh, when we first entered into a five-year agreement. That was renewed uh, in, 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 in 2010. Uh, there was an amendment uh, in, in 2011 whereby the city agreed to pay a management fee of $200,000 a year to Arts Fort Worth, plus electricity costs up to $100,000 uh, per year. Uh, there is a second renewal of, of that uh, original agreement in 2015 for five years. Uh, there is also an amendment allowing uh, five-year renewal terms to increase from two to four. And so the third renewal uh, occurred uh, in 2020, and the current lease agreement runs uh, through the end of October uh, 2025. Now, in the lease agreement, there is language about the responsibility for maintaining the building. Uh, there are at least three uh, pertinent uh, clauses uh, in the, the lease agreement that dates back to, to 2005. Uh, with respect to the condition of the building at the time it was accepted by Arts Fort Worth, the, the lease agreement says that uh, Arts Fort Worth agrees to accept uh, the building uh, in its present condition at that time. At that time, it, it found the building to be suitable and in good condition for the purposes that were intended. Uh, Arts Fort Worth also agreed to use its grant writing and fundraising abilities to secure funding to enhance uh, the, the condition of the building. And finally, uh, Arts Fort Worth agreed at its sole expense to perform all upkeep, maintenance, and repair necessary to keep the lease premises and its operating systems in good condition and compliance with all applicable codes and regulations. Uh, now, uh, this building uh, has been heavily used uh, over the years. Uh, it had a, a peak of use in, in uh, fiscal year 2019 before the pandemic. Uh, the Community Arts Center, like virtually every institution uh, around the world, was hit hard by COVID, uh, and attendance went down, and it's going back up. And we understand that it should reach the pre-pandemic levels again by fiscal year 2024, by next year. Uh, it, but it, the most recent figures for, uh, before the uh, pandemic indicate that we had here almost 90,000 visitors during that year. Uh, with the, the two theaters, the Scott and the Sanders, hosting 54 clients, 
for a total of 330 days uh, during that year. So the building has been heavily used, uh, and the gallery served over 900 visual artists uh, during that year. So it's, it's a great uh, gateway uh, for emerging as well as established artists. Uh, the current uh, occupants uh, of the building include the, the nine different nonprofit uh, organizations that you see listed on the screen. Uh, I think uh, most prominently Kids Who Care, uh, KWC Performing Arts, uh, along with uh, Caminos del Inca, uh, which is uh, associated with the Conducting Institute, uh, Miguel Harth Bedoya, and other uh, organizations uh, that, that uh, most of us will recognize, along with five studio artists uh, who are at, at home here at the Community Arts Center. Now the uh, last uh, summer's uh, building condition assessment determined that the building at that time required some $26.1 million of repairs uh, to bring it up to acceptable standards. Uh, the, the greatest components of that $26 million, as you can see on the table, eight million, eight and a half million dollars for mechanical electrical and plumbing repairs, uh, $6.2 million for water infiltration uh, because the, the building floods. Uh, and you can see some of the other uh, repairs that are necessary. Uh, 19 million of the 26 million are classified as required repairs that we need to make as soon as possible to keep the building safe. Another almost $7 million were classified as recommended, uh, which is not just nice to have, but something that we ought to do uh, as soon as we can uh, get around to it. So $26 million of repairs. That, uh, bear in mind, these are 2022 construction dollars. Construction costs have risen since then. And by the time we're able to borrow funds to make the necessary repairs, the bill could be in the ballpark of $30 million. It's hard to say, but it's definitely a, a large bill uh, that uh, we need to pay to repair uh, this building. Now, uh, the most promising funding sources for repairs and renovations uh, are led by the, the next general obligation bond program. Uh, roughly every four years, the Fort Worth City Council goes to the voters of Fort Worth to ask for authorization to borrow funds through the issuance of bonds for various capital improvements. And in this case, uh, the next uh, available round of funding would occur with the May 2026 uh, bond election. That's not been formally set, but we anticipate that we'll have the next bond election in May of 2026. Uh, we could also consider other funding sources such as certificates of obligation and tax notes, uh, but the, the task force, uh, upon the advice of our staff, is leaning toward the, the 2026 uh, bond program. Uh, for ongoing maintenance, uh, we could look at uh, a variety of options. We could uh, require the tenant, Arts Fort, Arts Fort Worth, to, to pay for all maintenance, which is now contemplated in the lease agreement. Uh, we could, the city could allocate funds on a pay-as-you-go basis as part of the annual operating budget. And if we were to do so, we would probably need to allocate about a million dollars a year as a rule of thumb to maintain the building uh, in suitable operating condition. Or we could go with some combination of those two approaches. We want to take advantage of existing models for managing city-owned cultural facilities. We actually have uh, at least three exceptional success stories from which we can draw some lessons. Now, not any one of these three is directly uh, replicable in the context of the Community Arts Center. They're, they're very different. But we can still draw lessons uh, from each of these three that are applicable to the Community Arts Center. So the zoo, uh, the Botanic Garden, uh, and Dickey's Arena, all three represent public-private partnerships that have been financially successful, economically successful, uh, and culturally successful. Uh, they're, they're sources of pride in, in, uh, for residents of Fort Worth, and we want to see what we can learn from their experiences that might be applicable to the Community Arts Center. We also want to explore a wide range of potential uses uh, for the building, including uh, several existing uses, the Community Arts Center, Kids Who Care, the Conducting Institute. The Fort Worth African American Museum and Cultural Center has expressed interest in occupying space within this building. That is another possibility. Uh, and then we've looked at the models from other cities 
Uh, we've received a briefing about uh, similar cultural facilities in places as diverse as Lubbock, Texas, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Ketchum, Idaho, Berlin, uh, and many others. We, we could list uh, literally dozens of uh, facilities around the world from which we can draw uh, valuable lessons uh, applicable to the Community Arts Center. We've re received uh, some interesting uh, results from the, uh, the current opinion survey that we'd like to share with you. As of Monday of this week, we had received a total of 381 responses. I think by today it's probably over 500, and we hope to increase that number uh, significantly. But these are the preliminary findings from the, the first 381 responses to the survey. Uh, we find that most of the survey respondents are relatively frequent users of the Community Arts Center. 61% had visited the Community Arts Center three times or more during the past 12 months. So these are folks who are generally familiar with the building. Uh, we found that only 14% had not visited the Community Arts Center in the past year. So these are folks who at least visited once, most of whom had visited three or more times in fact, as you can see, 25% had visited the building tw uh, uh, 10 times or more during the past uh, 12 months. So bear that in mind when you, when, when you uh, view the, the results. These are folks who are frequent users, knowledgeable about the Community Arts Center. We asked about the main purpose of their visit. 80% uh, visited this building to uh, uh, see uh, what's uh, being uh, displayed at the art galleries, 80%. And 41%, obviously some folks come here for more than one purpose, but 41% come to uh, uh, see the performing arts here at the Sanders Theater or uh, at the Scott Theater. Uh, so those are the two main purposes for people to come. Other folks came for classes and workshops or catered events, uh, meetings, and, and a whole host of, of, of other purposes. We asked folks to let us know about the degree of satisfaction that they had with their visit to the Community Arts Center. And this is one of the most uh, uh, impressive findings of the survey. 92%, the overwhelming majority of respondents to the survey said that they are satisfied or very satisfied with their overall experience here. Uh, very few people uh, expressed any kind of dissatisfaction uh, with their visit. When we asked folks uh, if they had not visited the Community Arts Center as often as they might have liked, what were the main reasons that kept them from doing so? And you can see that for 44% of the respondents, the lack of free parking uh, <laughs> on site and nearby <laughs> the, the lack of free parking has been a deterrent. Uh, and uh, I, I, I think I can assure you that we are aware of this problem. <laughs> uh, uh, another 40% uh, have indicated that they simply, they would like to visit, but they'd like to know more about what's been happening here. So uh, we need to do a better job of spreading the word about the good activities that are here, because if more people were to know about it, more people would be visiting. Uh, so those are the two main reasons by far uh, that people gave. There are a host of miscellaneous reasons. They live too far away to visit more often. Uh, COVID may have prevented them from coming. Uh, busy schedules, et, et cetera. We asked them, uh, and this is an open-ended question, so it, it, it uh, defies easy categorization, but we asked them, and we, we display the results here in this uh, word cloud, what do you like the most uh, about the Community Arts Center? We got 342 comments, and uh, the, the most common thread throughout those comments is that they welcome the opportunity for local artists to uh, engage in their craft and to display their works. Uh, that was the, 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 if you look at the, the, the words that came out, those are the most common. Space available for local artists uh, to, to perform visual and performing arts. Uh, you can see some of the other uh, words that uh, uh, appeared uh, most often. We also asked, what would you change? <laughs> and there you go. No surprise. Uh, an another uh, pleasant surprise 
was that the age distribution was almost uniform across the board. It's hard to draw any sharp conclusions aside from the fact that it's a, it's, it's a quite uh, diverse uh, visitor base with respect uh, to age. So whether you're in your 20s or uh, a senior citizen, you're equally likely to visit the Community Arts Center. Now with respect to race of the respondents, we found that 80% were white, showing a need to uh, engage uh, more folks uh, of color uh, in Fort Worth. So you can see African American only 4%, uh, Hispanics uh, 11%, uh, figures that are well below uh, the representation of those groups in the general population. Again, these are the respondents to the survey, not necessarily the visitors themselves. But I think there's a rough correlation between the respondents uh, and the visitors. Uh, over 70% of the visitors are female. And then when we asked about place of residence, uh, the, the greatest concentration of Fort Worth residents visiting the Community Arts Center came from three council districts, nine, seven, and three. So that's downtown, the near south side, and the near west side. Uh, those uh, parts of Fort Worth represented the, the lion's share of those who happened to know their council districts. Uh, now, <laughs> about a quarter of the respondents know that they live in Fort Worth, but don't know the district in which they reside. And another quarter or so uh, did not happen to live uh, in Fort Worth. And so here, here's the hard part. Uh, what are the issues that, that remain to be resolved? And here we want to hear from you. Uh, the task force has been uh, discussing loosely at this stage at least three broad development strategies for this building. Now, we'd like to describe them in very general terms. Please understand that these descriptions are highly conceptual in nature, and they can be modified however we wish. The task force has not formally adopted any of these descriptions. That's a topic for a future meeting uh, discussion. But they have begun to discuss at least three broad options. One is restoration. We're calling it uh, option A to make all necessary repairs and retain existing uses of this building. Option B, which we're calling renovation, uh, is a variation of option A. Uh, it also constitutes, it consists of making all necessary repairs, but also renovating the building incrementally to attract and accommodate complementary uses. So the idea, for example, of accommodating the African American Museum in this building would fall under option B so that it may entail some renovation, some remodeling of the space to accommodate such a use. Uh, we might want to attract uh, a, a coffee shop, for example. I know that Z's Cafe was very popular here until we started charging to park and it became more costly to park <laughs> than it was to buy a, a chicken salad sandwich. And so uh, that had a significant impact on on the, on the cafe's business. The third option is the most open-ended of all, uh, and we're calling it redevelopment. Uh, we're describing it as reimagining 1300 Gendi as a world-class cultural hub and redeveloping the property accordingly. Exactly what form that would take would be subject to further uh, exploration uh, and discussion. Uh, it is uh, clear to the task force, I think, that all three options would require a new management model to be sustainable. The, the, the current way of doing business has not been working from a financial standpoint. So something needs to occur to prevent us from getting $26 million in the hole uh, in the future. And we've described uh, the three options with respect to different characteristics, future uses, repair costs, renovation costs, annual maintenance costs, uh, whether or not it would be appropriate to issue a request for proposals, terms of the lease agreement, and finally, whether or not formal historic designation uh, would be appropriate uh, for the building. Uh, and in the interest of time, I'd, I'd like to move on, but we'd be happy to describe any of these characteristics in whatever depth you would like. It's uh, vitally important to have a common understanding about what we're trying to achieve, and that is to say, what are the criteria by which we should evaluate these three development strategies. 
And so among the criteria that the task force has been loosely discussing, which they have not yet formally adopted, but we'll want to discuss at a future meeting, would be the ones that appear on the screen. Obviously, health and safety, uh, preservation uh, of Fort Worth's history as reflected uh, in this building, uh, architectural character, uh, uh, impact upon the, the city's overall cultural vitality, uh, impact upon the size and diversity of the building's visitor base, impact upon economic activity in the cultural district and in the city as a whole, and impact on the city's capital and operating budgets, the financial impact. This is a list of seven uh, possible evaluation criteria that the task force may wish to consider in evaluating the different possible strategies for future use of this building. The task force may also wish to assign different weights to the criteria. Not all the criteria may be equally important. So they may wish to have a one, two, three weighting system. It could be one, five, ten. It could be whatever the task force wants it to be uh, to reflect the relative importance that we assign to each of those evaluation criteria. The task force could then assign scores to the different strategies with respect to each criterion. Uh, uh, as to the extent to which uh, the development strategy uh, creates a favorable impact uh, upon uh, the criteria in question. So if it has an exceptionally favorable impact, you would give it the maximum number of points. The exact scoring system remains to be discussed by the task force, but this is uh, an approach that uh, we believe that they will want to take. And here is a, a, a blank table that the task force would populate with weighted scores based upon whatever weights they assign. And this is essentially a way to facilitate a constructive discussion about the options. This is not to say that the task force is going to be bound by whatever numerical results uh, uh, emerge from this exercise, but it is a way to facilitate uh, discussion based upon values, based upon uh, the importance that we assign to various criteria. And so that's the process that the 1300 Gundy Task Force has been following. Uh, we'd be happy to uh, entertain any questions, but more important, we'd like to hear from you. So if you haven't already had a chance to do so uh, and want to speak, please be sure that you uh, enter your name into the sign-in sheet. Uh, we've got uh, quite a few names already, and uh, our distinguished chairman, uh, Councilor uh, Firestone, will be calling upon each speaker uh, in turn. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Fernando. Um, that was an exceptional overview. I think you captured uh, the last several months' work very well. The um, survey is also just a, I think, a, a great source of information as well. So uh, thank you and the staff for putting that together and, um, and presenting it this evening. Um, so hopefully everyone found that as good context and uh, a good framework to begin to have this discussion and, and really understand um, how important it is to all of us and how thoughtful I think not only the task force but the city, the mayor, all of us um, and the seriousness we're attaching to uh, this project and, and the opportunity as, as I described it at the start. So with that said, uh, let's get right into our comments. We have about 38 people, I think, that um, um, have signed up. So w just again to uh, mention, we'd like to uh, limit each speaker to two minutes. So if each one of our speakers could be mindful of that, we'd, we'd really appreciate it. And there's a clock, <laughs> if, if you're speaking, uh, if you are speaking, we'll ask you to go to the microphone where Fernando was just uh, uh, speaking from, and then the clock is across the room uh, with Michelle. Uh, so, okay, we'll get started. Uh, first speaker is Wesley Kirk. Where is Wesley? There he is. Okay. Two minutes is not enough. 
Uh, my name is Wesley Kirk. I'm a photographer and a filmmaker and occasionally an arts organizer. I was one of the founding members of House of Iconoclasts, an art collective for outsider artists. And the number one problem that we always faced was space. There just aren't enough spaces in Fort Worth meant to properly display art and have enough room for all those who want to come see it. The Fort Worth Community Arts Center matched everything we were looking for in a venue, both in its physical space and its mission, and we were given a residency here, but that was in 2019, and our first show was planned for May 2020. Since the pandemic, things have changed dramatically in the Fort Worth art scene. Mainly the art venues and organizations that were able to bounce back have largely been for-profit galleries and or folks who take money from the rich with strings attached. What Fort Worth has been lacking has been enough community spaces where artists, any artist, can show their work without having to make it palatable to the masses and the rich or charge exuberant prices to help cover gallery fees. Fort Worth Community Arts Center has been a bastion for artists who are focused on creating deeply personal art and community-driven art. I've seen shows here that have moved me to tears that could never have been seen in a for-profit gallery. I've seen shows here that have sparked important conversations showing how important art and storytelling can be to deliver urgent messages about our history and how it can create a better future. And most frequently, I've seen hundreds upon hundreds of artists displayed here who were given their first opportunity to properly display their art and start their art career. In the last five years or so, I've seen the staff of Fort Arts Fort Worth go above and beyond to make this an inclusive, community-driven space for artists. They've done incredible work with the pitiful amount of money they've been giving from the city. I've also seen firsthand the limits of this building. Parking is always an issue. The offices and studios upstairs are also in pitiful condition, which could be such a valuable resource for artists. But most of all, the issue is space. For every artist whose work is shown here, there are dozens more waiting for their opportunity. Because of that, I've seen countless artists and creatives get demoralized by how little the city values the creative community and how often they move away to cities with more support and more community art spaces, or worse, they abandon art altogether. Given how important art is for a community, what an economic driver it can be for growth and enrichment, to me it seems crazy that we're even having this conversation. Whether, the question shouldn't be whether or not Arts Fort Worth stays in the building. The question should be how many more buildings can we give Arts Fort Worth? How, much, how can we better support the creative community in Fort Worth? Thank you. Thank you, Wesley. Uh, Amanda Reyes, uh, followed by Joe Brown. Good afternoon. My name is Amanda Reyes, and I'm an actor, filmmaker, local artist, also residing in District 7. I moved here from the heart of Brooklyn at the end of 2020. The pandemic caused me to lose all of my work, and I took it as an opportunity to move back to North Texas, the place I was born and raised. But when I came back, I learned that the momentum that the Fort Worth art scene once had was halted by the pandemic as well. But slowly and with resilience, the art scene was starting to come back to life. Galleries reopened with such inspiring work that detailed the collective trauma that we had all experienced separately and yet together. Arts Fort Worth became a space for local artists to express themselves to their community. This place created unity and provided a platform for unknown local artists' works to be seen by our art lovers, investors from all over the world, since this space is next door to multiple prestigiously world-renowned galleries and museums. I was recently cast in the Arts Fort Worth original work series production of the Texas Book of Beasts by local playwright Jeff Irvin, a play about environmental activism and preserving green spaces in an ever-developing urban scape. Arts Fort Worth is one of the spaces that saved me after the pandemic. I met my community here. I feel supported here. And I know hundreds of others who feel the same and would express something similar. There are over 300 people that move to Fort Worth every day. In 2021, I was one of them. And many of us are not coming here with development money. We're not CEOs. We don't have oil or cattle money. We moved here because we have ties to the city in other ways that are more in line with the arts, culture, and the hope that comes with such growth as we are experiencing today. We are looking for spaces like this one, a place that provides classes for our youth, a platform for local artwork, a space for innovative theater, a place to celebrate our heritage and to connect with the world on a more accessible scale. My hope is that this task force hears us when we ask you to invest in the Arts Fort Worth the way your community has. There is a golden opportunity to create jobs here that help coordinate more, promote more, advertise more, and create more outreach that will only strengthen the beautiful and meaningful work already being done today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for this platform to be heard.
Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, Joe Brown, and he'll be followed by Becky Wilkes. I don't, have a formal, I don't have a formal script. I am Joe Brown. I am senior professor at Texas Wesleyan and chair of Theater Wesleyan and have taught there 45 years. I love this city. I have been here since every major theater has developed in this town. All started from the Scott Theater and the original tenant, the Fort Worth Theater. Out of that theater, that theater beget Circle, that theater beget Stage West, that theater beget Hip Pocket Theater, that theater beget Jubilee Theater. I am here really under what would be preservation and restoration. There used to be a wonderful commercial that said Fort Worth First, Casa, First Geodesic Dome by Frank Lloyd Wright. This theater had Donald Onsliger involved in it. He was a Broadway designer in the 50s and became per the senior chair of theater at Yale. This is a treasure in there that if that painting in the lobby were ever thought to be, I will be chaining myself to there. He designed, he designed that theater. So it's similar to what would be the Dallas Theater Center and the Frank Lloyd Wright space. This space was the grand dame, grand dom, before all these other places were done. It deserves to have a fresh facelift with proper lipstick and moisturizer put on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, and also it's a valuable option because Bass Hall is too expensive. TCU Theater, Texas Wesleyan Theater uses it. Dana Schultes was a student at Wesleyan that we performed in that space. We have a high school there now doing Frozen and it is used by a lot of our private high schools because Will Rogers Auditorium is a dump and Bass is too expensive to use. Yeah. This is a beautiful sit space and Jubilee Theater will be using it this summer doing the color purple. I'm on their board, yeah. So Kids Who Care is a major resident and the activity that happens and energy that happens just from them. I can't speak for the visual arts but I can speak for the theater and the performing arts there. It deserves to be treated right in its history in Fort Worth. And I have to go direct. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Belky Wicks, Wilkes, uh, followed by Jerry Tracy. Hi, my name is Becky Wilkes. I live in Azel. My husband has worked in the city of Fort Worth for many years and paid many city of Fort Worth taxes. Um, there are many compelling arguments for maintaining community art spaces. Most importantly, it supports the local artists in their creativity and development, regardless of our demographic. I came into the arts in 2007 when I began photography classes at TCC. Since then, I have participated in many exhibitions in this center, culminating in three distinct solo shows. I gained experience, confidence, and community, leading to national and international exhibition opportunities. I would never have achieved this without this art center. Exhibition opportunities are limited, and hard to come by and are often cost prohibited to, art, to artists. This art center with its eight galleries is a remarkable resource and I would argue it already is world class. We don't have to look for it being world class. It is world class. My work has traveled through the country and I've never seen anybody else that gets to exhibit in a space like this and I think we need to hold our local artists up. Um, this space provides opportunities for all of Fort Worth and the surrounding region. Dallas has four community art spaces, but they are divided by demographic. Here in this building, we are encouraged to come together, to enlighten each other across our differences, to tell our unique stories, and to listen and to consider those of others. I've had the pr privilege of exhibiting with many diverse persons especially my friend, Bill Barter, who is 91 years old, and over there, he's exhibiting his work. <laughs> the development, retention, and attraction of local artists is worth a significant investment by our city. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. Jerry Tracy, followed by Debbie Stein. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jerry Tracy, the executive director of Historic Fort Worth, Inc., and I am definitely the most historic component of this building. <laughs> 
But it is a pleasure to be here. I just want to name their names. These are some of the finest architects that ever lived in our country. They are connected to this building. Herbert Baer, uh, Don Oslinger, Joseph Pellick, and O'Neill Ford and Associates in San Antonio. You can't buy this combination today. It happened here. Um, this is a center with such an artistic past. Fort Worth Art Center is an outgrowth of the Fort Worth Art Association, and it was established in 1938. This has been the magnet for artists. Um, this is a center where parking fees have hurt its users, but I'm not gonna talk about it. You all already know. Uh, this could be a restoration project, not, which is not like new construction. We, own, we have owned several properties and we phase in our restoration projects. Uh, but if this building were properly landmarked, uh, it could earn back 25% of every cost you're looking at in state historic tax credits. And there are other ways to garner other tax credits. So it's harsh to see a total number that is not factoring in the methodology that preservationists use. I, I encourage you to do that. Um, and in closing, Fort Worth has earned bragging rights as the destination city with the second highest number of designated historic resources in Texas. The Fort Worth Community Arts Center deserves to be a part of this group, and that can happen with a phased-in preservation-based development plan for the historic Fort Worth Arts Center. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, Debbie Stein, be followed by Quentin McGowan. Oh, yeah, I'm in great company here. Uh, I must say I was a little apprehensive coming to this meeting today because I was afraid of what you were going to say. But I must say, Fernando, you did an incredible presentation, and this task force has done an incredible job because I was expecting the worst. I thought we were going to be gone here for a minute. Um, and I know I don't have to explain how important the arts are to all of us, otherwise we wouldn't be here. So um, I was called about, I don't know, I guess whenever 2015 by the then president of the um, Arts Council asked me to go to the city council to support this building. Um, by the way, my name is Debbie Stein and I'm past president of the Live Theater League. I'm the founder and chief improvement officer of the Riverside Arts District. And you are sitting on, in one of my favorite places because I was the tap teacher at Kids Who Care and this was art studio. Thank you. My favorite, my favorite people. I don't want to see them go away. But I've been called upon to support many buildings, whether it was a demolition or a change of use. And, you know, I always thought, okay, the building, and Jerry, I know, has wonderful things to say about the building, as we all do. But I really always thought about this, not as just a building, but as a place, a place where the people are really important. It's a great gathering place, whether you're a visual artist or a performing artist, and I'd like to see it stay that way. And you know, the 20, whenever that was in 2015, we had the same problems then. All those things that are on your list were probably on the list then that needed to be repaired. Because I remember that and we've talked about it for a long time. So I hope a restoration is possible. I think that's very promising. So whatever you need to do, to get this building in shape for us to continue and move forward. Let's do it. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, Quentin McGowan, followed by Yoko Pang. Thank you. Well, I can neither match the depth of the comments already made nor say anything in less than two minutes. So I'm going to leave my remarks with you for the, for the record and really jump to the conclusion which is simply that we need to recognize and repair the effects of too many years of deferred maintenance and fully support this important community asset so that it can continue to serve as a center for the arts and education for another 70 years. What you will hear from everybody in this room tonight is how critical and vital this is. What I'll be leaving you with is a little more of the archeological genealogy that as Jerry pointed out, is incomparable in this city or in any other city in the United States. So with that, do the right thing for this facility, and the city will be behind you to do that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good evening. Um, 
My name is Yoko Pong, and I'm currently the president of the Society of Watercolor Artists. Um, the Society was established 40-some years ago in Fort Worth. It is a nonprofit um, organization totally run by volunteers. So among the many activities we do to promote the art of watercolor, we have two very important exhibitions every year. One for members only, the other is open to the world. It's an international um, exhibition. So we are very grateful for the Health Science Center across the street to allow us to use the space for our members' show. But our uh, international show uh, becomes a potential issue. Many years ago, we have the international show in this building, but there was a policy change. We were told that group exhibitions were no longer welcome um, in the arts center. So we have, in the last several years, we have been using the central library in downtown Fort Worth to do that. But starting next year, that would go away. We, you all know that, right? So we are urgently looking for net, uh, appropriate locations for our international show. And our, our, so I would like to ask the panel to kindly consider the possibilities to provide exhibition space for artists as well as groups like us. And I guarantee you the, the quality, quality of the work from our society is really world class. It fits very well with your world class cultural hub um, uh, purpose. And just a plug, in fact, this year's show would start in two weeks. <laughs> um, from April the 16th to May the 20th in the Central Library. So whenever the library is open, walk in through the Central Corridor, turn right, you will see it. And I guarantee you the quality of our show would not cause an embarrassment to the Center. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. Uh, Devin Nowlin, followed by Jill Freer. Hello, my name is Devin Nowlin. I'm an artist and I work as the collection manager at the Eamon Carter Museum, where I am responsible for exhibition design, installation, preparation, photography, and digital asset management. I've been, a, um, that's what I do today. <laughs> but I have been an exhibiting artist and have worked in different capacities at the Art Center and with Fort Worth Arts staff since 2005. I responded to the survey to describe the personal and professional benefits to my career development that has been built by my activities here at this center. But tonight I'd like to speak about the impacts to current artists here on the walls tonight um, and the work of the um, Arts Fort Worth staff. There have been tremendous advances made in the programming here. In the past years, artists were responsible for paying rental fees for their opportunities. And today there are other funding that supports the artists instead of relying on them financially. The long-standing um, annual repeating rentals from other organizations had been phased out. Um, which was very difficult for some of those organizations, but it has had the effect of boosting the professional profile of the artists exhibiting here and has driven a lot of innovation. Maybe there are ways to bring back a mix. The renovations that were completed in 2021, expanding the galleries, updating the lighting and improving the flooring um, is something that I'm the most proud of because today the artists that exhibit here are able to document their work in a very professional setting and they use those installation images on their websites for residency applications, to apply to universities to continue their education or to market themselves in any other number of ways. And so I think that their decisions that were made here in those updates were really great as a catalyst to springboard the artists that get to exhibit here. Um, this center in the heart of the cultural district devoted to the city's emerging artists has a significant impact that is unlikely to be replicated anywhere. So I ask you to consider the renovation option and keeping the current um, facilities operating at Thank you. Thank you, Devin. Jill? Hello. 
Hi, I'm Jill Freer, and I live in nearby District 9, within walking distance of this building. And my husband and I chose to live here because of the arts and culture in the area. Uh, this building is a gem for the arts in, the, in Fort Worth, as everyone has stated. We know that tens of thousands of visitors enter these doors every year to experience art in some way. Uh, the Art Center serves at least nine current subtenants, of which one is the Stolen Shakespeare Guild, and on, on whose board I voluntarily serve. This theater guild um, has performed solely in this, in this space for years, and it operates on a very tiny budget. Um, our mission is to pro provide affordable, high-quality classic theater, and we need this facility to accomplish that mission. Where else in Fort Worth can a small theater perform? This facility has also been an incubator, as noted already, for some of the other performing arts, like Stage West Theater and Amphibian Stage Productions. If this building becomes unavailable, where will newly started theater groups have a chance to, to get going? Where will emerging artists, as stated already, engage with the public? Is the city prepared to provide an immediate city-funded alternative to the subtenants in this building? As the 13th largest city in America, Fort Worth needs to be a leader in the arts. Companies who consider relocating here value the arts as a quality of life necessity. We know that the arts contribute not only to the well-being of the citizenry, but to the economy, too. A 2021 State of the Arts report released by Texas Cultural Trust details significant returns on investment on the arts, and that's why the arts are worth supporting. Yet the city didn't provide the funding to support these facilities here. It foisted the major maintenance onto um, Arts Fort Worth, a nonprofit organization. What a great arrangement for the city to own a building, yet not maintain it. Surely, surely this plan was unsustainable, even at the time. Can a nonprofit be reasonably expected to support long-term maintenance on the building? I, I think the plan was doomed to failure. So uh, Fort Worth can do better. For the quality of life everyone, of everyone here in Fort Worth, I believe that it is in the city's best interest to do what it takes and provide the funding to support the arts in this building. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Uh, next up, we have Atlee Phillips, followed by Matt Sachs. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Atlee Phillips. I'm currently the director of Texas Art at Heritage Auctions. My dad owned an art gallery called the Fort Worth Gallery or Dutch Phillips and Company. I grew up in the arts community here. I've interned at um, most of the museums. Um, I also spend all my time talking about Texas art in different cities. And one of the things they really say about Texas a lot is that we have a great community for young artists. We're a great place for um, artists to come where they can afford to live, where their work, where they're supported, and the Community Art Center is a huge part of that. This is an incubator. Um, the murals that you love to see around the city, the bring economic diversity, um, the people who get gallery shows, who go on, they all had their first shows here. They all sold their first shows here. It's a very, very important space. Um, my mother was on the board of the museum when it was still here before it moved to the new building. It's an open secret. This building has not been maintained by the city the way that it should be. They should have had more support for many, many years, long before this lease or whatever, because it is such an important space. This is where all the things happen that then go on to make the city look great, to have these murals, to have these shows, to have this community, and the fact that it's free and it's under the control of artists. It is unbelievably important, and we would not have what we have now if we did not have it. And I can just tell you, having worked in New Orleans after Katrina, we work so hard to keep the schools intact because you need those incubators. You need places for young artists or musicians or theater people to work and to show their art and to experiment. And that is how you get a vibrant arts community like what we have in Fort Worth. And that's the only way we will have it. So if you do not restore this building, if you do not continue to allow artists huge amounts of input and control over what happens here, you will, down the line, in the future, lose so much of what makes this city important. Uh, Matt Sachs, followed by Chad Jung. Hi, my name is Matt Sachs. 
I help run a place, a local place called the Grackle Art Gallery. We're a, we're a local nonprofit uh, showing musicians and artists no fees, no commissions. What I would like to see here, first of all, free parking so anyone and everyone can afford to be here. Secondly, that all artists and musicians can show their work here and perform here without restrictions, without fees, without commissions, so everyone has an opportunity to express themselves. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Chad Jung, followed by Scott Barker. I think it's clear that the visual arts have been well supported here, and I think that that's amazing. My name is Chad Jung, and I'm a professional lighting designer. I've designed in uh, over 100 venues over the last 20 years all around the world. This one's still my second favorite. <laughs> I love it more than anything I can tell you about, but I want to talk about the people who are not in this venue, and I don't know a single professional who believes that the theater has been properly managed for the last 20 years. It is unfortunate that there's such a discrepancy between the visual artists and the performing artists, but I think that the only performing artists who would come here and talk to you about their joy would do it based on the money that's being donated to them by the Arts Council. It's a clear conflict of interest, and they don't understand how to run anything other than an arts gallery. This management has failed you. It has turned this asset into a liability, 100%. It does not have to be this way. And I just want to say really quick, the people who aren't here are stage west, and it wasn't incubated, and I know Dan is here, but it wasn't incubated. It was forced out because they wouldn't work with them. Amphibian, I'm a founding member. It was not incubated here. It was forced out. Amphibian decided to raise a million dollars to go get a different building because they couldn't produce here with the management. The same thing goes for Texas Wesleyan, TCU, Junior Women's Club. I don't want stolen shakes to be the next person to leave. And under this management, it will happen. And I want you to know that the new management structure is the most important thing to me when it comes to saving the theater because it deserves a champion and not somebody who's just going to look at it when they really have to. Thanks. Thank you, Chad. Uh, Scott Barker, followed by Lori Isbell. Yeah, hi, my name is Scott Barker, and I appreciate having a chance to speak to you for a minute. Between 2003 and 2017, I organized 17 events here, um, all art-related, mostly having to do with early Texas art, which is what I enjoy studying the most. And at each one of those processes, these, these events lasted between two days and two months. Um, I never had a moment organizing these things and participating in these shows and these sales where I didn't thank my lucky stars that I had a chance to live out this thing that I wanted to do in an honest-to-goodness art museum. I didn't know of any other city in America that could provide a place like this that's built for art, built for theater, that was available to the public, to somebody that wanted to uh, do the thing that they conceived to do. This is a field of dreams. That's what it is for us who are not professionals, and yet we need a place to express ourselves. And I was so grateful to have it. And I would tell people that. I would say, you know what, I just, I don't think there's another city in America where I could do this. This building also is not just any other building. This building's roots go back to the 19th century. You have the efforts of generations of Fort Worth residents whose desires to have a place where art could be showcased the, all those efforts and all those, that work that they put in stretching back to Mrs. Schuber and Mrs. Bewley and Sam Canney and Robert Winfor and all these people that worked to make this place
come true, that dream needs to be protected. And I think that is the message that you're hearing tonight. You got to protect this building. Thank you. Uh, Lori Isbell followed by Breen Richer. Hello, I'm Lori Isbell and I am a writer. I have recently returned to Fort Worth after living away from the city for a long time. I'm so glad to be back and one of the first things I did when I arrived was get myself to this building. And I saw an art exhibit, I attended a performance, and I thought back to my memories of this building that trace back to when I was in high school or college, and I had to come here for some kind of school assignment. And I came from a working class family, and I can tell you that when I walked into this modern contemporary art building, I think it was the first time I had ever seen a piece of framed art that did not have a cow in it. <laughs> True. And I have been involved in the arts and doing my best to make my way ever since. I'm here to support the pres preservation of this building and also support the work of the current residents, the Arts Fort Worth organization. Uh, they promote arts across the board. They are one of the only places in Fort Worth, perhaps the only, that can offer visual art, theater, dance, movement, literary arts, they do it all here and with a very important distinction, they not only offer it so people can come and view it, but people can come and participate in it. This is the place where you can come and make things and share things and show things and learn and teach things to other people. It is truly art for Fort Worth by the people of Fort Worth. There is something very powerful about that and should be preserved. I'm going to circle back in my final moments to the, the way we started this meeting. Mr. Firestone uh, called us to order and said that he wanted to make this building special. And I say that it is. Uh, Breen Richer and Larry Boone will follow Breen. Hi, my name is Brian Richter and I'm a brand new theater mom and I'm off script, which I understand makes theater people very nervous. So I apologize in advance. Um, I just want to say that I have the opportunity and I'm, I'm going to try not to get emotional. Um, to go with Kids Who Care on a theater trip to New York, and I saw the return on the investment in this building in about a dozen of those kids in that room whose lives were changed from their time here in this building. So I just wanted to share with you that today. Please help save this building, whatever we need to do. And here's, here's my Kids Who Care kid, Bronco, and he'd like to say a few words. Hi, I'm Bronco, I'm a participant in Kids Who Care, and I do a dance class every week. And when I go in this room, there's all these tables and chairs that we usually don't use. So I feel like maybe we need to expand to have a room for just storage and a room, <laughs> a room where I can actually dance, not looking at these chairs. Um, <laughs> Like, we, we use a few, but we don't have that big of an audience. Um, so I think the city of Fort Worth should invest in this building because of kids like me. Well said. Well said. Thank you for coming. Larry? I'm Larry Bourne, homegrown. Grew up in Oakhurst, uh, lived now in Ryan Place 43 years, and I was here when this was dedicated in 1954. I come to you as an artist, and this is more about the programming of, of what artists have when they come here. There's a call that goes out to whoever wants to participate in the show, and the uh, particular show, it's juried, and they tell you who the juror is, and then you get the notice that you weren't accepted. 
And so, you know, when I get a few of these, I, I go, I've, I've got to go to see what beat me out. <laughs> and we've got the big three museums here. So when people from out of town come, we'd always visit there, and then I'd bring them by here. And then I realized that things had kind of changed with what the art jurors were looking for. And I came in and I saw three Home, home Depot boxes stacked up and uh, a window shade on the wall. And I was going, I think we need more art than we do boxes. So I hope that in the programming uh, for future uh, artists, it's changed. But because of this place, different artists have come through here, emerging artists. Um, and I've got written down a few of them. James Tennyson, Joe Rutledge, Dennis Ferris, Don Taft, Susan Dunlap, Nancy Bean, Corky Cop, Martha Bean, Carol Ivey, and myself, Larry Bourne. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Larry. Uh, Tamara Garsek, followed by Donna Beckman. Take your time. Take your time. I am speaking on behalf of being a parent of a newly um, coming upcoming artist who is into music singing and guitar and coming here was the very first time that he was able to feel comfortable opening up in front of other people to sing and perform and Mel had the opportunity to create his very first music video here in this space so I just it was a, it's an important place for me and our family so that please renovate it and keep it so other kids have the opportunity Thank you. I'm Donna Beckman, and I'm here as a parent, grandparent, rather than somebody that's worked in construction and all of this, although some of my kids are doing that. But uh, we've had, I've had several grandkids that have been in the classes here and loved it and come, wanted to come back every time and have learned from this place. I've, we had a wedding here, which was fabulous. We've had... Uh, can't even think of all this. We've done a lot of things that are out of the artistic part, except that we've come for classes ourselves where they've had adult art classes and different things. And so I think that this is a very important place, not just for the artists to perform, but because of the fact that it is a community and we can all be here and enjoy the facilities. So renovate. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. Next up, we have Randy and Mark Thistlewaite, followed by Jennifer Price. They still with us? Uh, is Jennifer here? Am I the last one to go? No, we've got oh, a few more. I'm Jennifer Kassler Price. Um, I have been a curator at the Kimball Art Museum for almost 30 years. I was a uh, commissioner on the Fort Worth Public Art Commission for six years, two of which I served as president. I think my POV is probably pretty evident, I hope. Um, I echo everything that everybody has said that has come to the podium. Um, but I want to say something, and, and I get the emotional attachment. Um, Donald Owen Slager, my father studied with him at Yale, and my father helped to build the Scott Theater. He helped to design it. So I have, an, I have an emotional connection, I, I get that. Um, and I also don't like tearing down historical things, if you can preserve them correctly. But I also 
don't like the idea of throwing money at something and just putting Band-Aid after Band-Aid after Band-Aid on it, and it still is sinking. What I would like to see is the city of Fort Worth put their money where their mouth is and say, we're going to spend the money to make this community art center, community theater center, community museum, state-of-the-art, modern facility that can function and last and be free and not be falling apart for the next 50, 60, 70 years. Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, Tim Long? Thistle Waits. Okay, yes, thank you all. Hi, I'm Randy Thistle Waite, and I've had a lot of experience working in this facility um, for um, setting up art shows for about uh, 18 years, and I feel like it provides such an important it's an important place in our community for everybody to come together. And um, I'm gonna let Mark say some more words. Hi, I'm Mark Thistlewaite, a retired uh, art history professor from TCU, and also a former um, chair of the Fort Worth Art Commission, uh, which meets in this building, and it's associated with the public art program uh, in Fort Worth. Um, I, we've been in the other room and I've been making notes and so I scrapped any comments about parking and <laughs> I'm not going to mention parking uh, at all. Um, but I, I did, someone else had already commented on this, but I wanted to reinforce it because it's really been heartening to hear uh, the, uh, everyone who's spoken so far. Um, and what struck me uh, was, again, someone had commented on um, in the opening remarks, uh, the statement was made that this panel has an opportunity uh, for something, doing something special. Um, and I immediately wrote down, as did Randy, already is something special. Um, and again, that, that's come through. Uh, this building should be restored, uh, updated. It serves an incredibly important uh, role in the city as a public cultural facility that's free to all. One of the things that worries me about the private or the public-private model, uh, particularly in the case of the zoo and the botanic gardens, is the admission costs um, that in the zoo are ever increasing and that have been now part of uh, the botanic gardens. This should be a very public area um, yes. and it should be free. Um, I've been coming here, we've been coming here since it, to this building since 1977. It is historically important. It should be preserved and restored. Um, I've been continually impressed by the quality and the quantity of exhibitions. They rotate shows through all the time. It's sort of everyone gets a fair chance uh, and an opportunity to be seen um, in, in uh, ways they wouldn't be in other places. Um, and then uh, finally, I think in, in looking at the um, uh, slides and all the work that this panel has done, it's, it's quite impressive. But I wish there were more um, visual artists and performing artists involved um, in this panel. I don't see that many. Uh, and those are the people that are really good at imagining things <laughs> and reimagining things. So I hope that happens, and um, I hope this building stays here for a very long time and serves its very public function. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, Tim Long, followed by Barbara Wilson. Good evening, my name is Tim Long. I'm the executive director at Circle Theater in downtown. Uh, I don't have a lot to say more than my history. Uh, and with this building, when I was in the fifth grade, I came for the modern art and had a great lecture and was one of those things that propelled me to be an artist because a month later, I came over to the Scott Theater and saw my very first professionally produced adult play. It was a Neil Simon play and it was amazing. And it would be years later that I would work with 
pretty much the entire cast at Circle Theater. So it's a, it's a history thing, and I just want to thank you for this panel, for taking this on, to come up with certain ideas on how to renovate this building, because it is a special place. And I think we've all heard from a bunch of people how special this place is, but I think as you're in this room, you realize how important it is for the Fort Worth to be able to tell its story. And I think this is a great place to do that. So thank you. Uh, Barbara Wilson, followed by Ron Check. <coughs> is uh, is Barbara here? I thought that was Barbara. No. Okay. Okay. Is Ron here? Maybe we'll wait. They may be coming from the other room. Uh, how about Ashley Felker? Yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Ashley and I'm a Fort Worth resident. I live in District 3. I'm also the chair of the board of the Stolen Shakespeare Guild and so I'm here to speak a little bit about this room right here, this theater. Um, this theater is such an amazing space for us because we provide affordable classic theater to this community and with the Trinity Shakespeare Festival not being around anymore, we're one of the only places you can experience Shakespeare still in this community. So we want to continue to provide that to our community. Um, last year in 2022, we paid $48,000 in rent for this space and we brought in 3,400 audience members to experience classic theater here in this room. I keep saying this room because this room, as small as it is, is such a special place to experience theater, to be so close to the artists, to be so intimate with them, to be able to feel their emotions and to be in this space. It's so important to our community to keep a space like this available. Additionally, as a Fort Worth resident, not as Stolen Shakespeare Guild chair, um, I want to advocate that this space right here here, the Arts Fort Worth Center, it is a third space. And if you don't know about third spaces, third spaces are not work, they're not home, they're a free third space that the community can gather and engage with each other. The importance of this space is that it remains free and a third space for our community to continue to gather and experience each other and I guess just love on the art a little bit. <laughs> That's what I have to say. Hello, my name is Ron Cheek, and I am the founder and the director of the Texas Academy of Figurative Art. We have existed in Fort Worth since 2007, and we are the only fine art academy with a full-time curriculum in realist drawing and painting. I have worked with traditional galleries, and I have worked in the permanent collections of the Grace Museum, the Museum of Biblical Art in Dallas, and I've taught fine art at Texas A&M, TCU, Tarrant County college uh, and I've lectured at other uh, many other colleges and I'm just telling you this to give you my credentials as a professional artist and just to give you my personal story of how this building and the programming in it has impacted my career um, I wanted to speak in favor of keeping and renovating this space as it exists today I believe it serves artists and the community of Fort Worth in a unique way by providing opportunities that just don't exist in the traditional gallery business model or the museums that are in our neighborhood. So when I began my career, I frequently exhibited here at the Community Arts Center in group shows, and that expanded my presence in Fort Worth and beyond. And when I started my school, the Texas Academy of Theory of Art, Many of my students exhibited here, and we had student and faculty shows here. Um, and I have taught workshops here, and several of my students have come from among the artists that have taken classes here. In fact, one of my own instructors uh, I met at a workshop here who then began to study with us, and now he teaches for me part-time. Uh, so 
I've known several emerging artists who've started their career exhibiting here, and I've helped organize some of the um, exhibitions with those artists. And so um, this building and its programming has been instrumental in helping my career and many other artists. I think it would really be sad if it, if it diminished in any way. On a personal note, my own children have grown up performing in the Scott Theater. Uh, many of our friends' children have as well. Um, I've attended academic lectures, not just performances in the Scott Theater as well, so there's many uses for that. Um, my wife and daughters uh, have come here in this very room for plays on occasion. Um, and so, in summary, as an artist who I think is contributing to the economic um, uh, and culture of this city, uh, I would really strongly advocate keeping this building as it is and choosing option A and renovating it and going forward with that, continuing to make a place for emerging artists. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Uh, David Lanza, followed by Doug Blagg. Hi, my name is David Lanza, and I'm a professional sound designer and sound engineer in Fort Worth. And I'm going to summarize some of this to keep it brief. Uh, but the gist is that I've spent more of my life outside of my home and work, uh, sorry, home and school, I've spent more of my life in the Scott Theater than any other building anywhere in my whole life. Um, I have also worked professionally around Fort Worth and DFW uh, for 13 plus years now, and so I've been in almost every theater in Fort Worth and seen uh, what those facilities have to offer. Uh, it's, with all that in mind, I feel uniquely qualified to speak on the Scott Theater specifically and its place in this community. There's no other theater facility in this city that even comes close to offering the unique combinations of features that the Scott does. It fills an important size between the larger spaces like Will Rogers and Bass Hall that can feel cavernous and smaller theaters with 200 seats or less. It's shaped and acoustically designed in such a way that unamplified voices and instruments can be heard all the way to the back row. It has ample offstage wing space on both sides, for stay, uh, both sides of the stage for set storage. It has fly rail space and a fly system. It has plenty of dressing room and green room space. It has an automated orchestra pit. It has a freight elevator and a loading dock for loading in equipment and large sets. You would be hard pressed to find any other physical structure in Fort Worth that can offer this wide of a variety of features. And these unique combination of features cannot be easily replicated somewhere else. If the Scott Theater didn't exist, there's nothing else like it in this city that can fill its place. Yes, this building has heart and soul and history, but it also has these structural and physical features that make it so special. When you pair that with everything else that this entire building has to offer, I hope you can see how much of a gem the Fort Worth Community Arts Center is. There are many different paths this building could take, and I'm not here to advocate specifically for any of them. But if the topic of this meeting is the future of the Fort Worth Community Arts Center, then I just want to make sure that whoever is shaping that future understands the important and unique role that this building plays, plays in our city, and that with the proper vision and guidance, it can serve this community in new and exciting ways for decades to come. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Doug, Doug Blagg, is Doug? Great. Uh, be followed by J.C. Hosier. Thank you all for coming. It's nice to be part of this course of passion tonight. Um, Doug Blagg, I, I had a studio up here for the last two years. Fantastic experience. Just coming down to see the exhibits of all the local artists, just unbelievable. 50 years ago, the powers that be hired Henry Hopkins, um, arguably the most creative contemporary arts curator in the country. And he transformed this museum, the Modern Art Museum, into one of the cutting edge contemporary art museums in the entire country. And it really planted a seed, I think, in many of the young people in this city to become artists and to see how fantastic all of the great new art and contemporary art was. First time to see Jackson Pollock's and 
Clifford Steeles and Rauschenbergs, and that was powerful. It really affected a lot of people. This is an important institution. I hope we all have the wherewithal to keep it open, keep it funded, and keep it going on. Thank you so much. Thank you. JC and be followed by Benito Huerta. Hello, I'm JC Hosier. Um, I'm a props designer for KWC Performing Arts and also a mom of theater kids. Uh, we've been coming here for over 14 years. Uh, I'm also the volunteer data chair for them and I can tell you that we have over 150 volunteers annually coming to the theater and that's just to KWC. Uh, as these wonderful parents and children come in and we greet them in the lobby, we are so proud of this building. We're proud to point out its history. Uh, we give tours so they can see the space. However, there are also things that we are not proud of that are like, that need to be updated. Um, such as accessibility to those with mobility issues, mm -hmm. such as the plumbing and the water fountains. The whole building itself, we want to be proud of all of it and to provide the best for these children and their children for generations to come. So um, I hope that you take that into consideration, that we love this space, we love coming here, but it, we really do need to update it to the best of its ability so that it can continue to inspire all these children for years and years. Thank you. Benito, uh, followed by Megan Henderson. Hi, uh, I'm Benito Huerta. I live in Arlington, so don't hold that against me. Um, <laughs> I'm a professor at UT Arlington. I'm an artist. Um, also, um, I'm a, a person who supports the arts. I've been supportive of Texas art and artists over the la over, actually over my lifetime. Uh, one of the things that I teach at the University of Texas in Arlington is a, a professional practices class. I, one of the things I teach them is places where they could go to the city galleries to show their work. And I talk about Dallas Cultural Art Centers, and they have several of them throughout the city. There's the Irving Art Center, there's the Plano Art Center, and there's the Community Art Center that's now Arts for Worth. Did I forget to mention Arlington? That's because Arlington doesn't have an art center. Uh, one of the things that's important is that, you know, we have a good thing here. And I've been a very big supporter of it, but sometimes Sometimes when we lose it, we, for, we realize what we had and what we're trying to do tonight, I assume, is not to lose that, but to improve on it. Uh, some of the, the, the students that I've taught, uh, the former students now, are in the audience. They live in Fort, in Fort Worth. They actually work, some of them have worked for the commission uh, in various capacities. I have sat on several panels here to select artists. Uh, Sarita Westrup, who's in the First Arthur's in Residency program. I was in that panel. I was in panels for public art. Uh, did public art here in Fort Worth. I'm a big believer in Fort Worth and what it's doing. Uh, I also think that sometimes people forget that as a result of this not only just being local but a regional art center, it attracts a lot of people from the region to the art center. And what they bring is also, is their money. So tonight when my wife, Janet Chafee, and I go out to dinner in Fort Worth, I'm spending money in Fort Worth. And I hope that maybe in the future, when I'm paying the sales tax that's going to the city of Fort Worth, that I could earmark it for the <laughs> Arts Fort Worth. Uh, next up is Megan Henderson, and uh, following her is Luke Longuire. Good evening. Can you guys hear me? I was in the other room, and I could tell 
sometimes you can be heard. I'll tell you, I didn't realize I signed up to speak, but I always have an opinion, so I'm happy to take a few minutes at the microphone. <laughs> I hope you'll stick with me as I fumble through. My name is Megan Henderson. I'm a resident of District 9, and I have the privilege of serving on Arts Fort Worth as a new, newly appointed board member. So I'm new to the organization in that capacity, but I also work for Near Southside Inc as a community and economic development uh, professional. And so every day in my life, I get to work not only with the arts and the community, but also with economic development. We've heard a lot of incredible arguments tonight about the cultural and emotional impact of the arts, and there is no doubt that that is true. But I am here to talk to you about the other side of that coin, which is truly important. Art fuels the economy. It fuels our economy in Fort Worth. We're here to ask you for funding to support this center and to appreciate the work, the very important work of the institution running at Arts Fort Worth. But what I share with you is that the economic future of Fort Worth requires a workforce that is adaptable, creative, and prepared for challenges. There is nothing that does that better than art. The arts strengthen Fort Worth's education and economy, and they prepare citizens for creative careers, generating significant tax revenue in this city, and boosting tourism. Art creates jobs. One in, five one in 15 professionals in the state of Texas work in the arts, and that is reflected here in our Fort Worth community and many of those people here in the room tonight who are talking to you about how their profession was built out of this center. The arts and culture are a huge industry. They generate $6 billion in taxable sales for the Texas economy. We have a share of that right here in Fort Worth. And in state sales tax revenue, there was more than $380 million of state sales tax revenue in the arts in just 2021 alone. The arts boosts tourism, a huge investment that Fort Worth makes in its economy as their tourists and cultural visitors. 37% of non-residents for overnight leisure travelers are engaged in cultural activities. Those are born of the artists who work in the industry who drive tourism in Fort Worth. One in four visitors participate in cultural tourism. The arts can also improve health and well-being. Did you know that art can combat depression? Attending a cultural event once a month reduces the risk of developing depression by 48%. These are important benchmarks. Arts are not just about the emotion of the arts. They are also about the economy and the cultural impacts to our community that change the entire system. Tonight, we are asking you to consider a 26 to $27 million investment in this building. That amount of money for any one of these efforts, education, tourism, infrastructure, would be met with glad hand at the city of Fort Worth because I have the privilege often of sitting in meetings where those types of deals are negotiated daily. So it's a small investment for huge impact. We're talking about innovation and incubation within the walls of this building, and we are talking about infrastructure. This is a piece of infrastructure that needs investment because it has huge cultural and economic impact. Thank you for your time tonight. And your time. You, you sure you didn't sign up to speak there? That was pretty, that was really good. Uh, Luke, and followed by Lori Thompson. Hello, uh, my name is Luke Longacre. I'm a local actor uh, in town, but more importantly tonight, I'm a theater teacher at a high school. Um, I'm gonna read some comments from my students who have been performing here. I remember in 2016 when my dad took me to the Scott Theater to see All Saints Episcopal School's production of Kiss Me Kate. I remember sitting in that audience being absolutely mesmerized with only one sentence running through my mind on repeat. I want to do that. From then on, I had one goal, perform on that stage. The Scott was my Broadway. I've performed there twice now, and it's been the best experience of my life. I can't wait to continue to perform there. I hope I get to. Next, when I was a little kid, I watched my sister, who I looked up to dearly, shine and grow on that stage. Ever since I watched her first show at the theater, The Drowsy Chaperone, I couldn't wait to perform on that stage the same way she did. Now that I am at the age she was, I got the chance to grow as a person and become confident by performing at the Scott. I know I'm not the only one. This building is a home for so many people where they can express themselves by doing the thing they love with the people they love. Nothing can be more special than that. I would love to see more people continue to grow and shine in the Scott Theater after me. Last one. 
Uh, sorry, two more. The Scott Theater has been an invaluable part of my high school experience. Every year I've watched my senior friends give their last performances there and waited for the day that I could do the same. The musical every season builds a community at All Saints and the Scott has been instrumental in that. The traditions, jokes, stories are part of what makes our theater program who we are. The Scott Theater is not just that for All Saints but also every school that does a show there. We need to keep this theater as a landmark of the theater community in Fort Worth. And last but not least, I have been performing in the Scott Theater the past six years, both with All Saints and KWC Performing Arts, and it has be become my home. I have never felt safer and more loved than I do in this space. It is a space where creativity can run free, and people of all ages get to experience and take part in all forms of the fine arts. From the art gallery to the stage, the Scott is where people from all over the world, and I mean literally, I've become friends with people from places like Colombia, Luxembourg, and Italy in this space to do what they love. It is a landmark, and I would hate for anything negative to happen to it. I just have to say, as a theater teacher, it is incredible to see what happens when the environment that this space culturally builds these young artists. It is their Broadway. This Fort Worth community has to keep this space. I also will say, it needs a tech director, it needs management, it needs... <laughs> it needs... <clears throat> It needs to be state of the art so that the, the management team doesn't have to run fix the bathroom and run fix this and run fix that. They can focus on the artists that are in this building and providing and helping them, which is our students and our young people of today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Luke. Uh, Lori Thompson. Uh, followed by Jay Wilkinson. Hello, my name is Lori Thompson. I'm a resident of Fort Worth for 61 years. Been involved in the arts for as long as I can remember. Was on one of the task force by Betsy Price for the arts. And my thought is when a city invests in the arts, the local scene becomes stronger. We provide such a small amount per person per capita for the arts. And we have world-renowned museums, an, or, uh, an uh, opera that's amazing, a ballet that's fantastic. But the local scenes, scene seems to be left out for I don't know what reason. So my thought is the Community Arts Center has supported artists, has supported musicians and theater productions for as long as I can remember. And there's no excuse that we should be having a meeting here about the city funding the arts. It's just a no-brainer. Dallas funds the arts. I think it's $5.75 per person per capita. And when I was on the arts funding task force, we provided 50 cents per person per capita. So when do we get to start using the hotel occupancy tax and the rental car tax and sales tax for the local art scene? So. My, my request for the task force is let's get the city and let's hold them accountable. Let's find funding outside the city. Let's bring it all together and let's make this a dynamic local art scene in the city of Fort Worth, not just the museums and the ballet and the, all of the symphonies, but all of us that are local people that need a place to be seen. The reason I got started in art is I fell in love with it in college at TCC, and there wasn't a gallery that would give me the time of day, and it wasn't because they were not good people. They didn't have the luxury on betting on something that wasn't gonna make them money. So I put up an army regulation-sized mess hall tent two years in a row on 7th Street until I finally figured out I was sick of rain, I was sick of putting it up and taking it down, and I opened the Firehouse Gallery in Meadowbrook in 2003, and September, it'll be our 20th anniversary that it's still here in Fort Worth. And we need hundreds of those across, not just Fort Worth proper, Arlington, all the little outlying areas, because there's so many artists that need a place to be seen. Thank you all. Uh, next is Jay Wilkinson, followed by Claudia Mason. Jay left, okay. Is Claudia here? She may be in the other room. How about uh, Marita and Miguel Bedoya? They here? No? Uh, 
we'll wait. Maybe they're coming over. Uh, Chris Wallace, is he in this room? Or Lanny Brock? Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Lainey Brock, and I am a theater maker and an artist. I moved to downtown Fort Worth a year ago, having no friends, no connections, nothing that would tie me to Fort Worth. A year ago, I wouldn't have even labeled myself an artist, but given the opportunities that I've been given here, it grew my confidence and joy in this craft. Recently, I had the opportunity to be in a new work that has been mentioned, Texas Book of Beasts by Jeff Irwin. It is hard to make friends and connections in a new city where you know no one. But because of my experiences here, I was able to make connections that not only further my career as a theater maker and artist, but I was given a beautiful, wonderful group of friends. Some of them are right here. And community that I love here in Fort Worth. Arts Fort Worth is not just special, it is essential. Thank you. Hi, I love the Community Arts Center because it gives us the opportunity to enjoy art, learn about it, and exhibit our own work in an environment that is a professional and nurturing. The visionary spirit of its building, although designed many decades ago, um, remains current and offers the perfect backdrop for all kinds of artworks, thanks to its seven galleries. From large former paintings that benefit from some galleries' natural light to showcase their colors in all vibrancy, to interactive installations and performances that take advantage of the open floor plan, as well as the new media and film showed in the more intimate spaces. No medium misses a chance to be exhibited at its best. And the equal opportunity that enjoy the artworks gets replicated in the community. Art at Arts Forward, everybody feels welcome. As an emerging Latino artist, this community art center has given me opportunities that nowhere else in North Texas I've been able to find. Including one, having had my work professionally exhibited among artists from diverse backgrounds and ethnicities, shown to viewers from diverse backgrounds and ethnicities. Number two, having gotten to know many of these artists, creating a diverse arts community that has enriched all of our practices. And three, having had the same access to curators, resources, and calls for art than all of my peers. Overall, I think that having a big art center really encourages to bring all people together and give everybody the same opportunities. Please take in consideration that if you reduce the size of Arts Forward, you will also reduce its reach, the amount of opportunities that it offers, and the amount of people in the community that it supports. Please let Arts Forward keep its building, give its needed improvements, and let us continue to grow and thrive together. Good evening, thank you for the opportunity that you are giving me here. My name is Miguel Hart Bedoya, and for the ones that don't know me, I'm a Texan! <laughs> so, we're so grateful that Fort Worth welcomed me and my wife recently wed in 2000, and this has become our home, our only home, even though we are you know, from Peru and from Chile and we have lived in New Zealand and in Oregon, Fort Worth became our home. Our three children have been born here, and when, with planning, I knew that my tenure with the Fort Worth Symphony would end in 2020, we made family decisions to go somewhere else or stay in Fort Worth. And definitely staying in Fort Worth was the decision, and we still have two high schoolers in Pascal. And suddenly I realized, oh, I have to move out of Bass Hall. <laughs> and it was no question that I needed a place to set my library about the size of these walls and my point of work, and there was no other place but this space. I could not imagine 
living in Fort Worth and not being surrounded by art by artists. So in brief, I think this is the place where the heart and the soul of our artists, visual, performing, written art, should happen simultaneously at all times and be this a magnet, be a vibrant place, a welcoming place where anytime that you walk in, you'll hear children's choirs, amateur choirs, mariachi, theater, you can watch paintings, everything at once because that magnet brings people, people bring traffic, traffic brings economy and food, food, don't forget the food trucks in this building. <laughs> so this place is ready to become the representation of our heart and we'll continue to live and enjoy what Fort Worth has given to us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, um, is that one more? Okay. Great. Which one there? Uh, oh, all four. We've got four more. Uh, Jenna Grace. She on her way. Uh, is, is Claudia Mason in the room? They must be in the other. Yeah. Hi there. Yeah. Take your time. I just ran, so I'm sorry if I sound off. Okay. Um, my name is Jenna Grace. I'm a local artist and a small business owner. Another local group here, the House of Iconoclasts, gave me my first show in uh, 2021. I have an opening reception for another show at the 500X Gallery the day after tomorrow. This building has given me multiple instances of inclusion in shows, three in the past year alone. Oh, sorry. Despite not having finished my art degree yet or having come from an extensive background of artistic success. These local spaces and groups have forged my passion as a career from the ground up. When I think of Fort Worth Community Arts Center losing this space, I wonder where people like me will go. Hybrid spaces such as bars and salons have been our place to show what we can do without the, tra without the traditional credentials of being an artist along with this place. For many, the only environment of a professional inclusive gallery setting has been this. I have lost track of the stories that I have traded with other working class artists who couldn't afford the spotlight of private galleries or art school degrees. If this goes, most of us won't be able to go to any of the private galleries as they're too busy spiking their submission costs to even enter a show, despite acknowledging the financial burden of COVID on artists. I am so tired of seeing community spaces like this fall. I've heard all of the stories here so why does something with so much life have to fight to live? This space included me for a show last November after my institutionalization from an attempt. My art is all I have at my highest as well as my lowest. This space saved me. Being an artist here saved me. So I ask again, if this place goes, where do we? Thank you. Uh, is Claudia out there? Claudia? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Janae? Alan? First, I want to say I hate public speaking, so... I'm a dancer, we dance through dance. We, we speak through dance, so <laughs> pray for me. <laughs> My name is Janae Allen. I am the founder of Movement with Purpose Creative Arts Program and Rare Diamonds and Gems Dance Company. Um, we support through social emotional learning through the arts. So we meet all girls from three to 18 years old. My program serves in the Fort Worth ISD districts. 
and in the Forward Community for Young Artists, 3 to 18, old in several styles of dance and musical theater, 60% grant and, so and scholarship funded, and 40% affordable tuition. We as a company look forward to having a dedicated housing space here at the theater for safe functional use for our dancers. Due to our company elite high level dancers, the basement would be ideal for another dance room, but it would need to be more functional safe space to allow a second rental room for classes. I would also vision a dressing room so that the dancers could be able to have a place to dress and feel comfortable in their change of attire. It would also support more performing arts companies to be able to rent while using the theater as well. It would be amazing to be a part of more innovative partnerships representing a more diverse housing community, especially if the African American Culture Center uh, would also be housing at this theater. It would be an extraordinary opportunity to build community relationships, as well as already having a community partnership with the Kids Who Care Performing Arts program, I can't imagine how dynamic that would be to have all forms of performing arts housing at this theater. So I vote for the theater to be renovated for a community modern center theater to support all arts with a great management team. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, James Talambas. Columbus? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm James Columbus. Uh, I'm the current uh, vice chair of the Art Commission. Um, a lot of great stuff has been said by everybody. Um, and so I'll make it short. Um, first of all, um, you know, having been on a commission and, and and work with tax forces and everything. I think it's kind of absurd that there's only one artist and there's nobody here who actually uses the building who is, who is on the task force. It, there's nobody here. Pardon me if I'm wrong. Um, so, you know, um, thank you for being our voice. Okay. Um, also, um, a lot of the magic that, that uh, people have been talking about here it doesn't happen with private money it happens with public money and support hey you talk about Dallas spending three times what we do on the arts public money not private you talk about Houston spending six times what we do not not private money public money hey and you look at their great ev everything that those those cities are on their way to becoming world-class we want to be world-class we spend our public money on the arts. Um, and then I guess the only thing I would actually speak to y'all with would be um, I'd like to encourage all of you to continue this conversation and have your voice heard again at the uh, Public Arts Commission meetings every month. Uh, and the next one is on April 17th, right here in the building. So please, your voice will be on the record. We, we talk directly to City Council, for better or for worse. Um, so please come out, have your voice heard again, get three more minutes and, and, uh, let's not have this party stop here. Let's keep this ball rolling and show them what, what, what it means to have this venue and, and what it means to us in the city. Okay. We have, we have two more. Yep. No worries. Uh, yeah, no, it's great. Uh, Bernardo. Hello, guys. A lot of faces I recognize everywhere. Uh, it's a pleasure to speak uh, on behalf of this building. So I am Bernardo Valerino. I am a Colombian-American sculptor here in Fort Worth. Uh, I'm also the coordinator of the Fort Worth Art Collective, a collective that was started because of the lack of spaces in Fort Worth. So we find spaces around Fort Worth, and we showcase artists, local artists, their artwork, and, um, and help them grow their careers because we don't have enough spaces. The Community Arts Center is one of the only places by the city who allows us to help us grow as artists locally so that we don't have to export our talent but rather keep it here locally. I choose myself 
as a local artist to stay in Fort Worth and not become a Chicago artist or a New York artist and so forth. My career has been stunted in some ways because of that choice. Just think about that. But I appreciate everybody's you know, community that's helped me, the, that's helped me throughout the years. But anyways, really the reason why I wanted to talk is not because I'm an artist, but rather because I'm a real estate agent. In the last 20 years of doing real estate, one of the things that I have experienced is landlords and tenants, right? And I've also been in the board of Artes de la Rosa, also as a tenant of Fort Worth. And when a good landlord cares for the building, they take care of the building as the years go by. They don't wait until it's completely destroyed, you know, by the lack of understanding of the use of the building, and then tell the tenants, look, this is the contract right here where it says that, you know, you should have taken care of this or that. Yeah. No, yeah. good landlords take care of the buildings. Not only do they fix it, but they understand that with the years, things deteriorate and they require different kinds of technologies to maintain the building to be useful at that time. And maybe in the future, if you're a really good landlord. The city of Fort Worth is a horrific landlord to our local arts organization. You know, at Artes de la Rosa, the, the building sometimes, it requires months, years to get something done. You know, the doors that were safety needed, they just got replaced, right? Same thing happens here. So this is not a matter of like, you know, is the city going to put the money? The city should have put the money a long time ago. So I appreciate you guys listening to me. Where is the moral compass of the city when it comes down as a landlord to the arts and its arts community? Thank you. Sarah Blair. Hi, my name is Sarah Rochelle Blair. I am a resident of Dallas-Fort Worth, and I say Dallas-Fort Worth because I have lived everywhere in Dallas-Fort Worth. Um, I am a graduate of Texas Wesleyan University as a liberal arts uh, student with a bachelor's degree, and I will tell you, I came from nothing. I came from drug-addicted, alcoholic parents. They did not support me doing the arts. They pushed me into doing something I did not want to do, and I was in management and sales for a very long time. I myself became an alcoholic. I myself became a drug addict. The only thing that pulled me out of that was performing in the theater because you don't have time to do stuff like that when you are performing <laughs> in the theater. If I have to memorize lines, I can't be smoking weed or drinking. Now, occasionally, we will go out and have a drink together with the cast, but I don't have time to do that every day. And I am bent on breaking the generational trauma in my family. I adopted my 11-year-old cousin who also came from drug addicted and alcoholic parents. I brought him into this theater and thanks to Jason Leva, he has now decided that he has a passion for music in all aspects of it. Not just for theater, not just playing the guitar, but he wants to learn audio so that he can work in places like this and help people like him. He's 15 now and he is doing so great because I decided to join the theater and I have reached my hands out into him to uh, lift him up from the devastation that is my family. It is a horrible thing to come from something like that. And places like this give people like me who have nothing, no money, nothing to volunteer at and to make myself a better person and to make my children better people. Please, please make sure that this is a safe space for people like me to come from nothing. Reach over to the people that live in Hemp Hill. Bring them in. Bring in the musicians, the teenagers who have nowhere to go except for the bars or out on the streets to do drugs. Bring them in here to do Battle of the Bands or just to speak and be able to be heard. Also, I encourage you to reach out to veterans. My husband is a veteran and art has helped him through his TBI and has also helped him with his excuse me, I will end here, but veterans are very important and they need a space too. And the teenagers are being ignored and they need a space too. Don't take that away from them. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think that's the last of our speakers. Okay, Th thanks everyone so much. Uh, what we thought we would do is just maybe go down the dais if uh, you all are, are uh, ready or prepared to do that and give you all some feedback and some impressions uh, so you hear from all of us this evening before we go. Do you, do you want to start, Don? Sure. Uh, I would just like to say that uh, 
say that I'm impressed with the breadth of input from everyone. I mean, of course, we expected to get uh, favorable input tonight, but all the stories, the diverse stories, were really touching and informative. So thank you. Um, I don't even know where to start. I, I've been in so many roles when it comes to things about the city. And when we're making decisions like this, which are up to other people now, not me any longer, um, getting input from the community is the most important factor that goes into these decisions. And so having this public meeting as a part of this is the most important factor to the work that we've been doing, in my opinion, as a task force. Um, We've been hearing all the information. We have started out with opinions of our own of the things that should happen here. We have our own stories and histories of bringing our small children here when it was the modern museum of art and on all of these things. And so I think I just wanna make it very clear that we hear you. Um, this was the thing I was hearing when I was even first asked to serve on this task force. And I made it very clear where my allegiance were. I am not an artist, but I am absolutely a supporter of the arts. And I do that in every aspect of my life. So I'm really proud to be on this task force and carrying forward the voices that we've heard here tonight and the voices that I've heard in my entire time of living in Fort Worth. So I appreciate all of you. I'll echo what has been said um, and just be very brief and say thank you. Uh, Thank you for being a part of the process. Thank you for sharing your voice. Thank you for showing up and speaking up. Um, thank you for being vulnerable um, and being authentic with us so that we understand how um, deep this issue is, how important this issue is. Um, thank you. It, it, it takes courage, and you have exercised great courage this evening, and it's been hugely, hugely helpful. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for um, sharing all that you've shared this evening. Really appreciate it. Echoing it's, uh, what has been said, thank you is not enough. I mean, uh, uh, it, very a lot of thank yous for showing up because some people didn't think people were going to show up at times and or having a head count. And I'm very thrilled and excited that you all did show up and that it got to uh, another room as well. What I will ask of you as well, um, Fernando will, will let us know when the last time as far as getting the input. Y'all saw 318 or 318 or over 300. I was, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised. It should be well over in the thousands of getting a response. So please encourage your family members, neighbors, anyone that, that lives in the city of Fort Worth to give this input. And I also challenge you for one thing. I always tell individuals, for every one problem, there should be three solutions. Because when you give somebody, bring me one solution, more than likely they'll come back with zero. But this is a team effort with the community. So I'm glad that there is also in, in the importance of getting feedback from the community, from the artists. I believe all of us are our artists, creatives. So in that aspect of it, looking at it, from a financial standpoint, sustainability. Y'all did see their $26 million, right? That's just renovation to bring the building up to date. That doesn't mean, how, how do you sustain that in future efforts, right? Because there will be other elements that, that, that have the maintenance and what have you. Point being is, I know that there were some, some comments that were made which are very helpful as well, but what other areas of, of looking at, and I think there was a question uh, in the survey of open comment, you know, write it in there. Again, it, we'll get a chance to look at it, um, but again, that just challenging you to see what other options you all may have as a solution. Thank you. I'd like, I'd like to respond to Mr. Hiron's uh, question. Uh, we'd like to keep the survey open at least two more weeks uh, to give uh, folks a chance to, to respond and still be of value uh, to the task force as they make decisions. Uh, we agree, uh, uh, William, uh, we should have more responses uh, than the number that we've already received. Uh, we encourage folks in the audience to spread the word uh, so that folks might respond uh, to, the, to the survey. Uh, another question that's arisen is about uh, uh, additional opportunities uh, for comment. Uh, this is the only public hearing that the task force has uh, formally scheduled. However, uh, the task force uh, 
We'll be holding at least two more meetings, April 13th and, and April 27th, as we indicated earlier. And all the meetings are uh, open uh, to the public. So if you're interested in attending, you're, you're free to do so. Uh, furthermore, the task force will be making recommendations to the City Council. Ultimately, uh, the City Council will be making uh, decisions about future uses uh, of this building. Uh, therefore, uh, the Council would welcome your comments at any of their formal public comment uh, meetings, uh, which are uh, held on, uh, generally on the first and third Tuesday of the month. You don't have to wait until after the task force delivers its report to the Council to speak to the Council. Uh, the Council may wonder what you're saying uh, 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 without reference to the task force uh, report with findings and recommendations. However, you are free to speak at any of the council public comment uh, meetings as well. Thank you. Okay, first of all, I want to thank everybody for showing your passion. Believe me, it comes through. I have the privilege of knowing a lot of the people that spoke today, and I want to say I'm pleasantly surprised to see that diversity because in our survey, that diversity was not there. And we need to show that this is a community for everybody, everybody that we live and love for work and love the arts. So we need you, you know, as the artists, to go out and help us bring the people and get them interested. Believe me, we learned a lot today, maybe things we weren't aware of, but we need everybody to work together to make something successful. It's not blaming one or the other one. We're in a situation where we need everybody to work together if we have a goal that is, you know, preserving something, making it grow, and seeing these wonderful success stories. So help us. Let's get that survey growing. Um, I think 400 people is nothing, you know, compared to the 89,000 that came and visit. Uh, please let us show the city council that people care. And that's everybody going out, helping us, showing things, and be open to ideas, you know? We wanna create history. We wanna develop things. We wanna create things that are gonna be here, as many people said, for many, many years, 70 more years to come. And it's wonderful to hear every single story. Believe me, it has touched us, and we thank you, because you have that creativity that maybe we're not as creative, but we love it, and we encourage it. And we're, believe me, we have put our money where our mouth is several times to support the arts. So we thank you again. Well, I too want to thank you all for being here and taking late into the evening to express your opinion. And I've been involved in several city projects over the years, but it's unlike Ann and Leonard, this is the first time I've sat on this side of the table for a public meeting. And I have to admit it's a little intimidating, <laughs> but I really appreciate the passion that you all brought to this. And I, I want you to understand that um, everybody on this task force is in favor of a community art center. Everybody wants that. The main question is, how do we get the building fixed? And where do we go after that building gets fixed? So that's what we're struggling with. But I really appreciate the, pa the passion you have for the programming for the stories that you told. It was very meaningful to me and I appreciate hearing them. Well, well, the curse and the benefit of going last is that you just get to echo a lot of really great words. Um, vulnerability, passion, uh, courage. It takes a lot of courage to get up and, and talk about this. Uh, I think Scott said it very well. Uh, there's there's nobody on this board that, that, that wants to see uh, anything but, but improvement and, and what it can be. Um, uh, it does take us all coming, coming together to find a, a solution. Uh, it's, it's hard, you know, change is hard. And, and not to say that it has to be changed for the better or changed for the worse, but it's just we, we've got to find a right answer and a solution to how we move forward, how we move forward with $27 million worth of improvements, how we move forward with maintenance and, and you know, paying the electric bill and, and management and all of those different things. And, and I truly, truly believe that when we all come together, we can find that solution uh, that, uh, that will make this uh, center not only as great as it is today, 
but is uh, as, as great as it can be tomorrow. So thank you again for your time, your courage, your vulnerability. I, I learned a tremendous amount tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Uh, I think, um, you know, I'll just wrap things up with a, a couple comments as well. And I think uh, one is what Scott mentioned and, and Matt reiterated. I want to reiterate, reiterate everyone on this, uh, in this task force on the dais here is in absolute support of uh, perpetuating this facility and the arts. That's just the bottom line. And to give further context to that, I think it's worth noting that the genesis of this really came from the mayor and her understanding when uh, really uh, presented with the financial issues that uh, the building is, is under, the pressures, said we've got to solve this for, uh, to, to preserve a great asset and we got to solve this for the arts in our community. So that, that's why this came about, and I think that's, that's really important um, to, to know. Um, I do want to, on a personal note, want to uh, just comment, because I was kind of called out on it uh, a little bit about uh, not believing that this was a special place. So that was a very <laughs> poor choice of words. Uh, and, you know, and how I can make that personal, and I should have said this to you all at the start, uh, my kids have gone through uh, Kids Who Care. And, you know, my daughter, who's now back east, just out, outside of New York, uh, is a sophomore, was just cast as one of the leads in the spring play. And she would absolutely, um, uh, 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 she would absolutely tell you that her, you know, her love for the theater started here. So uh, for me, it is a special place. So uh, it just didn't feel right to say more special, but I guess we could, we, we could do that. <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, to maybe say that in a, in a different, hopefully better way, uh, just a couple notes that I wrote, um, you know, it's not a question if we use the building for the arts, it's a question of how best we utilize the building for the arts. And that's really what I've, I was trying to get at. Um, and... So, you know, I, again, as I mentioned at the start, you know, these are great minds with great experiences driven by the arts and community service and um, on this task force and that experience. And so I think we're going to tap into those things to come up with something probably unique, uh, as it should be, um, but there's so much experience that we can tap into. I think we can, we have a great opportunity to hopefully get that right. Um, so, you know, my thanks to you as well, um, for everybody that uh, is here tonight in this room and, and in the other room. Uh, we appreciate it. And, you know, it, it is impactful for sure. And I, I just want to kind of, uh, as we were going through with uh, all the speakers, note some things and kind of got on a, a train of thought here. But uh, if you'll uh, give me a moment. So, you know, in, in terms of the art that we have here in visual and theater, uh, what, what I started to write down is art is entrepreneurial, art is economic development, art is tourism, art is community, art is education, art is opportunity, it's a profession, and art can define and save lives. That's what I heard tonight. So, you know, uh, that's powerful stuff. That's powerful stuff. And so I think, uh, speaking for Fernando and, and the city, we get it. We get it. It's a valuable, valuable thing that is important to so many people in our community. So we recognize it. We're here to tell you we want to address it in the most positive way we can, we can because um, from an arts perspective in Fort Worth, Clearly, there is nothing, nowhere more important than, than this facility. So um, th thank you all again for being here. Um, we appreciate it very much. It, it is getting late, but it was well worth it, and uh, we're so glad for this opportunity. Thank you all.